All right, so yesterday was all about general sequences and then arithmetic sequences where we're adding or subtracting the same thing every time. What we're going to look at today is a geometric sequence where we multiply or if, it's, if it looks like division, your numbers are getting smaller. Just remember that division is multiplication by a fraction. Dividing by two is exactly the same thing as multiplying by one half or dividing by four is the same as multiplying by one fourth. Okay, so keep that in mind. We call that number yesterday was the common difference when we were adding or subtracting. This is going to be called the common ratio, and we use an R to get the next term of the sequence. So I'm going to go through the same stuff we uh, looked at yesterday. The general form, if we were to list out the terms, we've got the first term, then we multiply that by the common ratio to get the second term. When we multiply by the common ratio again, r times r is r squared, so forth and so on, as far as we need to go with that. Uh, notice, similar to yesterday, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it was n minus one times the difference. Notice the exponent here is n minus one. Uh, again, it's one less than the term that we're on. This is the first term. This is the second, third. This would be the nth term. Um, as long as r is not zero, if the common ratio is zero, you don't have a sequence. You have a term. Once multiplied by zero, then you're just going to have zeros after that point. So obviously, the common ratio cannot be zero. And really, for that matter, it can't be one um, because that's not going to give you anything. If you just multiply by one, you're going to get the same number over and over and over and over again. All right. Uh, recursive definition. Again, remember the recursive definition is not as helpful because you have to know the previous term. Just as a reminder, this would be the current term, a sub n, and a sub n minus 1 is the previous term. I'm just trying to emphasize this notation because it tends to be what throws people off the most is the notation. We multiply the common or the, the previous term by the common ratio. Uh, and we start counting with n equals 2 because we know the first term. Um, here, this would be uh, the next term. a sub k plus 1 would be the next term where a sub k is the current term. We start with 1 in that case because when we plug in 1, we get a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 times r. Um, so that starts us where we need to start. All right, now the explicit definition is what is more helpful to us. a sub k is equal to the first term times the common ratio to the k minus 1. And just like yesterday, we're going to plug in the first term. We're going to plug in the common ratio, and there's not usually as much simplifying that can be done uh, with the explicit definition for geometric, but we'll look at that here in a second. All right, so let's look at an example. Find the common ratio, a recursive rule, an explicit rule, and the tenth term of our sequence here. We've got 3, 6, 12, 24, 48. What are we doing every time here? Multiplying by 2, so our common ratio r equals positive 2. Your common ratio can be negative, by the way. Uh, the recursive rule. That would be a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 times 2. Typically, we would put that in front, not after that, but we'll just leave it for the moment. And that is 4. Um, n is greater than or equal to 2 and a sub 1 equals 3. Don't forget you have to put those um, qualifiers on there. The explicit is a sub n is equal to our first term 3 times the common ratio to the n minus 1. Now, here's what people like to do. They love to multiply the 3 and the 2. But we discussed this when we talked about exponential and logarithmic functions. You cannot multiply the 3 and the 2 because the 2 is the base of an exponential. 
They're not the same base. You can't do anything to combine those there. Uh, the only simplifying that could be done, and I believe we went over this with the exponentials as well, is we can decompose that 2 to the n minus 1. Remember, when you multiply exponentials that have the same base, you can add their exponents. So if I already have a combination n minus 1, then I can break that down into 2 to the n times 2 to the negative 1. Because same base, I can add those exponents. So I just add the n and the negative 1 there to get n minus 1. In this case, what I can then do is say 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. So you could see this. I'm not requiring you to do this, but I want to show you in case they put it like this um, as a multiple choice answer choice. This equation right here and 3 halves times 2 to the n are the same equation. They are the same equation. They don't look the same, but they would give you the same results. Okay, the only thing that we need to do now is to find the tenth term. I'm going to use both of the explicit rules to show you that they give me the same answer. Okay, so if I'm finding a sub 10, if I plug it into the first one, 3 times 2 to the 10 minus 1, that equals 3 times 2 to the ninth, which is, I'm definitely going to use my calculator on that because I do not know what 2 to the ninth is off the top of my head. That final answer is 1,576. I could have also plugged it in to this other version and done 3 halves times 2 to the 10th. 3 over 2 times 2 to the 10th gives me the exact same number. Okay, 1,536. Doesn't matter which way I look at it, that is the 10th term here. Okay, now I throw this one on here because I have seen a released question like this before. 10 to the negative third, 10 to the negative first, 10, 10 cubed, 10 to the fifth. So what does it look like when multiplying by every time? Any ideas there? Okay. Here's an easy way to figure out your common ratio. You can pick any two consecutive terms. You can pick any two consecutive terms and you divide the second one by the one right before it. And that's going to give you your common ratio. 10 to the fifth divided by 10 cubed. When you're dividing, you subtract exponents. So five minus three is two. So 10 squared is our common ratio over 100. Okay. Um, so that's 10 squared or 100 for our common ratio. So anytime you can't quite figure out what it is, that's a method. Any two consecutive terms, okay? Any two consecutive terms will help you figure out the common ratio. All right, so our recursive rule is a sub n is equal to, I'm going to put the common ratio in front this time, and I'm going to leave it as 10 squared just because that's kind of how the terms in my sequence are written, times a sub n minus 1, or n is greater than or equal to 2, and a sub 1, our first term, is 10 to the negative third. All right, our explicit rule, a sub n is equal to the first term, 10 to the negative third, times the common ratio to the n minus 1. Now, here's a good example of where we actually can do some simplifying uh, very easily. We have the same base, so we can simply... Um, Add their exponents once we do this power raised to a power thing. Okay, how do we handle a power raised to a power? Power raised to a power, we multiply. Okay, 
We multiply, so that's 10 to the negative third times 10 to the 2 in minus 2. Don't forget to distribute with your multiplication. And then here we have the same base, so we can add their exponents. That is 10 to the 2 in minus 5. So again, just for illustration purposes, I want to show you that both of these should give us the same answer. So I'm going to put it into the first version here. Whoops, n is 10. Find my tenth term. So that is 10 to the negative third times. We do need to put in parentheses 10 squared raised to the ninth. And that gives us 1 times 10 to the 15th. Okay, remember the E there, the capital E is scientific notation. So if we also plug it in over here, this will actually get us to the answer a lot easier. 2 times 10 is 20, 20 minus 5 is 15. So again, either version of the equation works. But the 10 to the 2 and minus 5 is much simpler and not that hard to get to in this case. All right, so I would like.